The legendary Garp is being held currently on the Pirate Island Beehive, ironically where the pirate group he actually helped take down alongside the Pirate King Goldie Roger originated in the Rock's crew. Oda does not think on coincidence when of course looking back on the series, characters being in prison has always been to elevate the plot line to Zoro being captured by Helmeppo and his father Axan Morgan early on to of course the Whitebeard Pirate 2nd Division Commander Ace being locked up after his Blackbeard defeated him and of course causing one of the greatest arcs if not the greatest arcs in Marine Ford right before the time skip and then we had side characters like Jinbei who of course was the final ruler to be introduced who had strong relations with Whitebeard and Ace and was a staple in the first arc after the time skip in Fishman Island. And of course, our first arc revolving around a Yonko in Hokkaido Island that led to Jinbei becoming a main character as an official Straw Hat pirate. And then, of course, there's Eustace Kid after his defeat to Kaido after Dressrosa that was used as an example that the worst generation are about to be humbled and are not playing pirate anymore as he was in prison of Udon where he of course met up with Luffy again and of course teamed up to take down Kaido and Big Mom and lastly there's Doflamingo who had extra protection because of the of course knowledge he has about Mary Jo as the Holy Land with of course Weevil about to be joining him after losing to Greenbow this could lead to some sort of cross guild plotline all in all Garp being locked up will have a huge impact just looking at the pattern of Oda's writing and my guess is Luffy versus Blackbeard with a little twist motivated motivated by God Valley. But before I explain that further, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel as we do a deep dive on Monkey D. Garp being locked up and they won't let him out in my Akon voice. Now, of course, when you look at Dress Rosa, Don Chinjal says Garp was the embodiment of a demon back in the day for pirates and says if only he uncovered Dragon was his son sooner, showing how much he hates Garp and how ferocious Garp really was in his prime. We got some moments that remind us, of course, when it comes to Marine Ford, him humbling Marco the Phoenix during that arc. And of course, this is the same Marco who fought King Queen at the same time during, of course, the Onigashima raid. And of course, using Galaxy Impact on the Blackbeard Pirates as he entered Pirate Island B, having an amazing start to a battle. So Garp has showed a glimpse of himself in his prime. Now, of course, Don Chinjo's anger to Garp led him to telling Luffy that Blackbeard is the only worst generation who could actually do something in the new world. And Luffy is pretty much trash for being equal with him after he was, of course, being washed up and after their Kongosaki clash. And Rayleigh has to be washed himself for believing in Luffy as the next guy. And of course, says the Marines killed the last young evil dude who could have did something in Ace, which obviously angered Luffy. And finally says, do you really think you can beat the Marines? Admiral and the Yonko and surpass Roger. Don't make me laugh. Which is funny now because Blackbeard actually captured Garp. Uh, so Jinjo is right about that. And of course, that's his, his internal option. We'd definitely be happy about that. And of course, Luffy is the one of the few guys with Kongosaki coding, so he was wrong about this. And Rayleigh just scared Blackbeard off after Wano with his Kongosaki coding, so he was wrong about Rayleigh being washed. And finally, Luffy defeated a Yonko and Kaido, and an Admiral and Marine, and of course, in Kizaru after Egghead Island. So, and is now considered a Yonko himself, and feared by the world government for being the next Joy Boy, a pirate who is actually above Goldie Roger. So, we can see that, yeah, the future wasn't really too helpful for Don Jinjao's statement. We can even see 30 years ago, Don Jinjao versus Garp and how Garp prepared by crushing eight mountains. And then, of course, ended Jinjao's pirate career. So, yeah, Garp as Prime is the real deal. Now, Garp's influence was so strongly felt that even beating some sense into the revolutionary commander-in-chief Sabo when he was a kid alongside Ace and Luffy, who is now a hockey expert and of course a Logia user who has seen the Gorosei in Imu's true demonic form. And us knowing Garp's hatred for Celestial Dragon makes it all the more sweeter in the fact that Sabo works for Garp's son who used to be a marine himself in Monkey D. Dragon. The impact this man has knows no bound and it makes him the most interesting prisoner of all time on Pirate Island Beehive. Yes, I'm speaking about Garp. Well, maybe I can't say that as of course Roger was in prison himself and spoke to Garp about taking care of his son. On Ace, but that's what Blackbeard is in this story. He's just another evil Roger, which is why it will explore more in another video when it comes to Blackbeard's personality. And how Oda will explore more when Garp and Teach have a discussion with Rocks probably being mentioned as well. It will be a more sinister version of that Garp Roger meeting, in my opinion. 
Now, Oda had Garp specifically escort King Neptune and Princess Shirahoshi, as this is obviously the ties to a friendship he had with Fishman Island, like Roger and Whitebeard, his rivals, also did. And then there's the fact that Shirahoshi is calling him Luffy's grandfather, the same way Big Mom acknowledged him as Garp's grandson when it comes to Luffy, initially at the end of Fishman Island. It's like Oda doesn't want us to forget the connection that, of course, been certified from post Andy's lobby when, of course, it was revealed that Luffy's father, of course, uh, Dragon and Luffy's grandfather was Garp. And of course, the Marine 4, when he let Luffy punch him, of course, that led to the ASL flashback after that arc where Garp, of course, was raising Luffy. Or should I say Dadan? But you get the idea. And it was hilarious seeing, of course, Steli, the king of Garp's homeland, go a kingdom. Think Garp is scary when, of course, he dissed the Celestial Dragons with no care at all. I always found it funny when Hina was pressing Garb during the reverie about Garb's grandson having two Yonkos beef over him, and Garb did not give a crap, doing nothing. Is what Garb said, it's already started, there's no point, there's nothing I can do. Making me think if Garb could do something, he would have pulled up, maybe during Wano. And Garb said one of the biggest quotes in the post time skip when Hina was worried of, of course, the Rocks reunion. And Garp replied, events will always find a way of surpassing our imagination anyways. This is obviously foreshadowing to the final saga of Luffy, Blackbeard, Shanks, Buggy, and their chase for the One Piece, while also integrating, of course, after Vegabunk's message, Kobe, Imu, Dragon, Akainu, and many more interesting figures in that crazy panel. Of course, we then learn of how Garp got his name, Hero of the Marines, for, of course, taking down the rocks during the God Valley arc or God Valley pa Past, or God Valley Incident, 40 years ago. And Sengoku mentions there are so many legends about Garp, but he never wants to talk about that one, which is why him being locked up by Blackbeard is the perfect time for him to actually talk about God Valley. And of course, Sengoku then explains how Garp had to work with Roger and protect the Celestial Dragons, which is why he never became an Admiral, because of his hatred for Celestial Dragons due to his moral compass. And it makes me think of how he is only three, if you think about it, only three Will of D that are connected to the world government all rebelled in Dragon leaving the Marines and Garp denying Admiral position and Vivi escaping CP0 recently. And if you can even go deeper, you could say four when it comes to Lily and revealing that she was a D to Imu, that's what Cobra did that got him killed. And when Goldie Roger, the man who fought rocks alongside Garp on God Valley, and of course reached the summit of the piracy and becoming the pirate king, admitted he'd seen Garp like his own crew because of all the times they nearly killed each other, says to the Marines, at least bring Garp or Sengoku. Uh, the rest of you are no fun during that of course odin flashback it's not small words especially when of course kaido said roger did it with hockey only and we know garp also only did it with hockey as well so i know garp's not in that like, top five that kaido made but garp definitely is a legend that needs to be heard around the world and i thought it was very cool when garp came to g14 the marine naval base in the new world and of course, it upset Vice Admiral Dahl because they were about to, of course, head to Egghead Island, and she couldn't said she couldn't. They couldn't spare any Marines because they were launching their own offense and against an Emperor and Luffy, who was coincidentally Garp's grandson. So Garp attacking Yonko Blackbeard at the same time as Luffy's top op. Like I said, Oda does nothing on accident. It actually was beneficial for Luffy, Garp doing this. Of course, Garp came in with his Conqueror's Coding Galaxy Impact, which was even deadlier in the anime than the manga. But Garp made it known that he is not retired, and you got my protege Kobe, who is the future of the Navy, locked up. This is Oda's way of passing the torch from Garp to Kobe, the same way Roger passed the torch to Luffy for the final saga. And I must admit, the fact that Garp said he's losing his edge makes me only excited when we see him at God Valley in that past flashback. I also thought it was funny when Garp demanded Aokiji to unfreeze Hibari, let Kobe go, and of course come back to the Marines. And even Aokiji loved it as he said, and he's, as he asked Garp, could he kill his former student for his current protege? In which Garp says, didn't I teach you to live in the moment? Woman, and of course wavering his weakness as he slammed Aokiji's head to the ground with Blue Hole, a devastating attack by Garp, which is what Garp actually does. He weighs his option and then lives in the moment and takes any, in every experience how it is, which is why his current status could cause some of the biggest moments in One Piece. We learn of Garp's of course routine of using battleships as punching bags. As brand new stated, no one is born a hero. It's a strength you have to earn. It's a life lesson that as us as fans could use in our daily life which pretty much means putting the work and results will show for itself as we see garp in his old age throwing the largest man in the world into the sea san juan wolf like it was nothing which scared the blackbeard pirates and then of course when kobe got tricked 
Garp took the shitty of the rain sword attack head on for Kobe, showing his speed, durability, and nobility of protecting the future of the Marines. And he even gave Shiryu a nice fist souvenir as well. We also learned that Garp's bounty is the same as the Admiral's at 3 billion berries, showing how much of the pirate world still respects him outside his prime. We also seen the process of Aokiji learning under Garp, who was extremely young, and how he wanted his freedom. He didn't want to teach Aokiji, but of course, eventually trained. Aokiji and said remember no hockey which Aokiji replied funnily I don't know hockey and I love how Oda demonstrated Aokiji's power growing over time so we see Garp's of course anger of Dragon becoming a revolutionary to where eventually Aokiji's power was matching up with Garp and we can even see his anger over Luffy becoming a pirate and Aokiji's like why are you telling me this I don't care and I believe Luffy, Blackbeard, Aokiji, Garp and Kobe will have some intense moments in the final saga and Aokiji even says you have a habit of raising enemies as Dragon, Luffy and Aokiji all be came against the world government and Garb says we are through here this is deeper because because even Garb doesn't mess with the celestial dragons the true enemy of course not the actual marines as we see Aokiji and Garb's hockey clash being equal though I must admit Garb was wounded and finally Garb tells Kobe don't lose your head justice will prevail this is deeper because Garb's way of life is being explored with this quote and speaking of Garp's way of life, Oda explores this more deeper with his lesson one to Kobe of an old man and a baby left behind on a savage island. And Kobe says get off the boat and let them escape as Garp says wrong. He's half dead anyway to the old man. Leave him and prioritize the young infinite future. That is the real change that can be made as Garp, of course, we see him punching through Aokiji while calling him soft for being concerned of his scratches and with blood dripping from his, of course, shitty wound. And of course, with Avalo Pazar with the devastating galaxy divide that he did to Avalo Pazar was showing how much Garp truly has in the tank still. As we see Kobe's results of his training being insane and Garp laughing as he tells the Navy to leave mission complete and sacrifices himself on Pirate Island Behave as Aokiji stabbed him with ice and was freezing him and he laughed being surrounded by the Blackbeard Pirates in an epic way to fail just like Whitebeard at Marine Ford and Roger at Logtown. Only difference is Garp has somehow survived. And I love the conversation we've seen during the God Valley incident of Kong the Fleet Admiral begging Garp who was of course on vacation to help out the Celestial Dragons on God Valley who stole this treasure from Pirate Island Beehive that belonged to the rocks. And Garp is laughing at them and saying they have enough protection with of course Figurland Garling and the Holy Knights being there and sad pattern being present but Kong says nah Roger's coming and Garp tells him to lead with that next time as he gets ready. Shows how much Garp wanted to take down Roger even more so than Rox who he did take down with the help of Roger which is a funny coincidence and it was cool to see young Garp instantly arrive with a hockey fist and his right hand man Bogard the legendary Bogard swordsman looking for Roger with all the smoke showing how fearless Garp was even at a young age. Blackbeard was ecstatic to hear Garp being captured saying that's one of hell of a consolation prize when of course hearing Colby and Moria escaped he was pissed but having Garp was definitely a happy to hear for Blackbeard and tells Kuzon don't be too hard on yourself for not killing Garp as not many people can take down Garp and you know Blackbeard being a historian knows how of course how strong these OGs were powerful in their prime and he was a Whitebeard pirate for so long seeing Roger and Whitebeard in their full prime and even feared Rayleigh even though Rayleigh admitted that Blackbeard could beat him at this age because of course he knows Rayleigh in his prime but of course of course, Kuzan doesn't say it was a 1v1. He says, of course, that I had a lot of help, which is true. All in all, we see how Oda purposely kept Garp alive for some specific reason as Kuzan was going for the kill. Well, I believe we're getting a God Valley Part 2 with Luffy and Kobe teaming up to confront the Blackbeard Pirates. And then, of course, the legendary crew of Blackbeard former Admiral Aokiji, Shiryu of the Rain from Empire Down, and the level 6 prisoners, with of course the OG Blackbeard Pirates who are getting crazy double abilities that we saw of course in the law battle, reminding me of the Rocks crew back in the day. And then of course we have Kobe, Helmetpo, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, which we recently seen in the last chapter, how Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, that monster trio on Albaf is so powerful. And of course remind me of Roger and Garb's team up, but of course you have to remember Rayleigh and Gabon being there and Bogard being there. And then of course Garb witnessing again a um, event that surpassed passes even God Valley and maybe he spills the secrets of God Valley which he hates to talk about. All I know is that Oda is not going to be putting his foot on the brakes and I must admit if you guys are a fan of this video check out my Luffy vs Imu video I just made as well. The content won't be stopping as we get towards the end of the year.